All right. Now, uh, the last video we did an example of phase one DNVPN. Now we're going to go ahead and do a, a, a phase two um, configuration. Now, what that's going to entitle is a couple things. One of the things that we're going to need to do is I'm going to disable, disable the summary address off of router one because that's one of the caveats with it. You cannot use that summary address, which I'll also show you how you can um, with the leak map. But you know, in this scenario right now, we're going to disable the summary address. Right. First off, well, let's shut down. Let's shut down this tunnel um, just for the sake of configuration. Because we're going to need to make some changes and then re-registration is going to have to happen. So let's shut down tunnel 100 on all devices. So we shut down tunnel 100. And do TCL quit. Config T interface tunnel 100 shut down. So we got my tunnels interfaces shut down. So one of the things we're gonna to wanna to focus on the hub, right? And we'll go back to this command output. So right now, this is what the, the default configuration looks like on the, on the hub. What we're gonna to need to do for phase two on the hub to get uh, that working is we're gonna to need to do two commands. We're gonna to have to do a no IP next hop self. I believe that's how it is. I can't remember the command context. We'll just go into the name router. So logging into router one. Let's get to router one now. So we do a no IP next top self. It is EIGRP 100. Now remember, this is needed so that when EIGRP receives that routing update from one of the spokes. So in this case, router three. Once router three sends that routing update to router one. Um, He'll look, do the resolution, uh, when they do the, the resolution request that router three does uh, to router one, he'll do the lookup because of the next top of the routing update that router three received from router five. It'll know to then send the resolution reply with the correct uh, NBA mapping to router three so that spoke to spoke tunnel can come up. Now, so that's why that command's needed. And then we wanna do a no IP split horizon because of the fact that we need to do a uh, full routing updates into the routing table um we need to make sure that all the spokes are able to learn each other's uh networks so we'll do that beautiful so that's done now the change that we need to do on the spokes is number one we need to configure them as a uh multi-point gre interface and the way we do that is just one command so we go to three so we do a tunnel mode GRE multipoint. So that's one command. Oh, well, so you know what? Let me do a no tunnel destination. We got to kill the tunnel destination. And then we do a tunnel mode GRE multipoint. Perfect. And that's really all you need um, for that specific command. And then you do uh, no tunnel destination come on now no tunnel destination and then we can do a tunnel mode GRE multipoint so we got the GRE multipoint done so now our tunnel has been moved over to a GRE multipoint style of tunnel right so we're going to do the no shut on their tunnel interfaces to bring it up and then we should see our tunnels come up and neighbors come up and we'll make sure that we got connectivity. So we do a no shut there. We do a no shut there. And then we do a no shut there. So it's going to take a little second for the uh, interface to come back up. But it should have come back in a second. So that tunnel interface is up. That one's up. Let's take a little bit for EIGRP to do its thing. We should get our JSON C. JSON C's up. Our JSON C's up. Perfect. So just do some verification commands. Show IP route EIGRP. 
Oh, we're not getting any routes. Oh, duh, I'm in the wrong router. So we'll go here, show IP route, yeah, GRP. See, now we're getting uh, the, the loopback interfaces coming from each of the, device, the destinations. And then we can make sure that we're learning those routes on the spoke as well. Spread here at GRP. We're safe to say if it's on one spoke, it's going to be on the other. So we got full routing, right? Now, same thing with the DMVPN command. You could do some uh, show DMVPN just to verify. Oh, I keep going to the wrong router. Show DMVPN just to make sure we got our mappings. And those two are dynamic as it should be from the hub's point of view. And then router three, it should be show DV, DMVPN. And you can see that it's static and it's static. Now, the fun stuff. All right, so what we wanna do is, and remember that process that I explained with the resolution going to uh, router one uh, originally from router five, he was initiating the packet. The same thing happens in router three's direction because once he receives that and he tries to re-forward to reply, he doesn't necessarily know that NBMA mapping, so that same registration uh, process happens again. And at that point, he gets router 5's IP uh, NBMA mapping in his table, um, and router 5 has router 3's in his table, and they're able to do the tunnel. So, I can demonstrate that, and I'm going to do a trace route instead of a ping, because I want to show you guys the initial first hop that it's going to do, that first set of communication that it's going to first talk to the hub, and at that point, everything else should be a direct tunnel, and I'll show you the dynamic tunnel. So, we'll do the same thing, ping 155.0.5.5. Source, loopback zero. No, I didn't want to do a ping, crap. All right, well, either way, I wanted to show you guys the next top, but yeah, I'll, I'll do it this way as well. Trace route, 155.0.5.5, source, loopback zero. You should see it go directly to router five now, right? Awesome. So the way that's done, now if you look at the show DMVPN, You'll notice that router uh, 3 actually has a dynamic entry for router 5, right? And same thing on router 5, if you do a show DB, DMVPN, he has a dynamic entry for router 3. And that's essentially where your dynamic, your spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnel is happening. So any traffic that's destined, destined to router 3, trace route 155.0.3.3, source back, source loop back 0. You see that it's going directly to router three opposed to touching the hub. Um, and that, like I said, is triggered by the next top address because if you do a show IP route, 155.0.100.3, you see that it's going out of the directly connected interface for the tunnel, but with it being directly connected, because NHRP knows the mapping, it'll send it directly to router three without having to traverse router one. And if you do a show IP Ceph 155.0.3.3, you can see that the, the Ceph entry for that is going to be the next top of 155.0.100.3, right? Which is still going to go out of tunnel 100. But behind the scenes, you're actually still doing the, uh, the update going to the cloud. Now, one of the things I want to show you is now you see how we have these routes floating between the spokes in the hub and the ISP is in the middle. If I do a show IP route, VRF, MPLS, you notice we're not learning any of those routes coming from the customer. Normally in a, in a typical MPBGP VPN v4 solution, the, the, the service provider is typically participating in your routing updates. In this case, with the DMVPN overlay on top of this, uh, you completely take the service provider completely out of your network. Um, essentially, and you're just using them as access, and the DMVPN is actually what is controlling your, your infrastructure, right? So that's where all your data traffic is going to flow for your actual service. You wouldn't really want to send it on the MBA, M MBMA unless you really have a specific reason to. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose of wanting to create the tunnel. So now you see that's how phase uh, two works. No, I don't want to close this connection. Now, Phase three is just as quick, and it's a couple, one, two commands that needs to be added for that to happen, right? Well, actually, let me show you guys the leak map. So I already have a route map created. Show route map. Show IP. Ah, 
I keep building the wrong router. Show route map. Good. Show IP access list. Okay. So what this is saying is I have a route map named leak default EIGRP, right? And I'm matching the IP address of access list one. And access list one create it, it has the actual loopback addresses for router five and router three, right? So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna reapply that summary um, address and then um, show you guys, I'm gonna create a, another loopback address, I think on router five, if I don't, if I don't already have one created. Just to show you guys the difference, or is it router three? I thought I thought I had one created because I tested this out um, myself. I don't, so I can create one. That's not a big deal. So before I apply that command, let's go ahead and create the new loopback address on router five. IP address one fifty five dot five dot five dot five two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five dot zero. Right. Ooh, too many. Okay, so we want to go to router EIGRP. Go to router EIGRP 100 network, and we want to do 155.5.5.5. And we should get that update. So if I do a show IP route, 155.5.5.5. Damn it. All right, and you see we got the actual route um, for that. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna show you guys the difference after we apply that leak map to the uh, summary address on how the, if that specific route doesn't exist in the routing table, um, essentially it's gonna go through the hub and do the same communication. Now if the specific route does, then it'll enable you to do this, the uh, actual, um, I'm sorry, it'll do the spoke to spoke tunnel. So. Let's go ahead and get that configured. So router EIG. No, anyway, so interface tunnel 100. And then you can do a IP summary address. And then we can do 0 .0 .0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0.0, 0 0.0.0.0. And then you specify a leak map. Ah, definitely forgot one step. Got to tell it what router protocol, EIGRP 100, and then you specify the leak map. So you got leak map, and the leak map name was LK EIGRP default. Make sure I get that correctly. Beautiful. And we applied that. So we saw before, show IP route, right. we didn't have the default route, and we should have it now. So perfect. Now we'll do a show IP route on that same subnet and you notice that now the network is not in table. So, but if we do it on show IP route 155.0.5.5, that network is in the table because of the leak map. So let's do the same thing. Let's trace route to 155.0.5.5 source, source loopback zero. And as you can see, that is actually going to happen because we are getting that update because of the next hop, un unchanged next hop coming to router 3 from router 1. Um, it knows the forward it directly to router 5, right? And it gets that spoke to spoke tunnel going on. Now let's see what happens when we do the same thing except for that 5.5.5 route that's sitting in the routing table. That's not sitting in our routing table. As you can see, it traverses the hub no matter what we do. So... You know, that's something, like I said, it's possible. It's not recommended because of the amount of configuration. In my eyes, it's just, it'll become overwhelming, but it's possible. Um, so that's just me uh, showing you guys how to do that with the, uh, with the phase two and using the leak map to be able to leak out specific routes. So if you want tunnel to tunnel uh, communication, you can have that happen. You know, you can still have that going on. So that's one of the cool things about it. Now, the next video will go in and configuring uh, DMVPN phase three, which this is the coolest, but you know, we'll see when we get there. See you guys in a little bit.